Welcome back to All Things Outdoors. I literally just got done snow blowing the pond. I don't really do my driveway. I figure if you can't drive up my driveway in the winter time in northern Indiana, probably don't want to talk to you. Just kidding. But I usually do a path to the pond and then a path to the woodshed. And I usually haul the wood back and forth with the sled. It makes it a little easier. But uh, another thing I end up doing in the winter time when we get lots of snow, for two reasons. One, it's better for the ecosystem. Two, it's uh, better for the kids to have fun. But I end up snow blowing a lot of the snow off of the pond. Uh, for one, that lets the sunlight shine through the ice, so it's not like a dark out blanket that ends up killing all the, the algaes and stuff under the ice. Uh, but it really helps keep the oxygen levels healthier in a, in a pond. So, but we've had so much freezing cold weather. This is actually, it's supposed to be out of the teens for the first time it feels like in a month. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've had more single digit days in February than when we've had double digit. Uh, but the ice is pretty thick. I got to thinking as I was snow blowing, what would happen if you actually had to start a fire on a lake? How long would the fire last and would it actually burn through the ice? So let's let's just try it. Let's start a fire on the pond and see if it actually will burn through the ice or if the water from melted ice would put it out before it actually got through. So here's the deal. We're going to end up doing the fire right in this area. It'd be deep enough for the fire to submerge if it falls through. However, if anybody would step in the surrounding area and fall through you'd probably only drop to your knees so it'd be a little safer so we're gonna we're gonna use this area plus the kids only ice skate i keep them up there most of the time they do come around here and follow the track but we're gonna we're gonna take this little corner over here and rope it off let's get some wood going see if we can find some kindling see if we can make a fire happen First off, I'm not gonna to try to start the fire on the snow and ice right off the bat. Obviously, it won't work out that well. So I, I split up a few pieces to start a platform. Uh, and then this is where we'll get our small kindling going. Uh, and then I'll have some bigger stuff ready to throw on as soon as it takes off. But this is gonna be where we get our fire started and then we'll pile on top of it. Nature's best fire starter, pine cones. Oh, I think we're going good now. I'm gonna try to keep like a bit of a square going with the wood. And I have some of that wet stuff leaning on the top. That way it kind of dries out as it burns. Not saying it's the best technique, but it's one that's always kind of worked for me. Oh, while we're waiting, I got a couple pieces of gear I got to show you. Big shout out to Hilltop Packs for the food bag. You can have your own personal customized print put on your food bag really really super cool so he actually designed and did this for me and it, it, it looks awesome so it has the all things outdoors logo with my maroon bells uh, emblem right there uh, and then also it's on both sides but not only did he send me one he sent me two so you got a, a larger bag for the longer trips and then a smaller bag, which this would probably last me for about any two or three day trip, as long as I'm not bringing the Sloppy Joe hot dogs. These bags are super, super cool. So thank you so much, Ben from Hilltop Packs. Make sure you check them out. I'll put a link to his website in the bottom of this channel. Oh, one other thing he sent. Check out the fanny pack. Now, this is actually a fanny pack that hooks to my backpack or it has a strap, you can wear it standalone. I had to take a couple of the straps he sent with it and attach it to my backpack. If you've seen my ULA pack, you know it doesn't have a hilt belt. 
what I did is I added a couple of straps to the base of the shorter straps. That way it would give me a couple of loops to attach the fanny pack to on my backpack. I never have it loaded enough to be a serious stress point for the, the, for the base of the shorter straps, but it does work out well in carrying a few extra things that I, I have trouble sometimes fitting in my pack uh, in winter trips. do for now. Thank you. split up some smaller pieces that way if it gets tough to get going again I've got a lot of water built up. why don't I just show you guys the water is really starting to pull up at the bottom so I think if we keep it above the snow levels ice levels we might be able to get it to burn through but I'm really wondering so what this is is an experiment we're gonna find out Well, it's going good now. Water's really pooling up pretty good. Guess now it's just kind of a waiting game. I got, I should have plenty of wood on it. I mean, I could always get more if I need it. And I just, I guess, gotta wait it out. Man, forget the zero chair. Hey, can I get a lemonade? So far, if I needed a fire, an emergency situation, um, and I was stuck on a frozen lake and the ice was at least six inches, I'd probably be okay at least for a couple of hours. So that's about what I've had this fire going. Uh, and right now the ice is about as thick as this hatchet blade and the water is up to about there. Left-handed, no look. So it's been about four hours and I've just keep dumping wood on this thing. Uh, it, it's pulling up more and more water, but I think it's more surrounding than it is going deeper. Everything that's in the water, completely unburnt. So I guess if I was stuck on a frozen lake in a survival situation, I would at least have four hours of heat if the ice was six inches thick. So we're going to go a couple more hours and see if we can figure out. Maybe we'll uh, let it burn out, scrape it off, and just see how thick the ice is in the middle. I thought unicorns could fly. I have to go do a snow rescue <laughs> right now, but I'm gonna scrape this off real quick, uh, put out the fire, and while I'm doing that, since I gotta put the fire out anyways, I wanna be safe, um, I'm gonna see how thick that ice is real quick. So let me get my shovel, I'll scrape this off, we'll see, get all that water cleared out, and I wanna see how thick the ice is underneath it. Then we'll have a good idea of if we could survive on an overnight, on a frozen lake, with six inches of ice, having a fire. All right, I'll be right back. All right, and then there's our hole, which is maybe an inch and a half. So it did not burn through. Um, I don't know that it was gonna actually get much deeper than that. All right, in case you're ever wondering if you could camp out on a frozen lake, I guess you can. Well, thanks for joining me on this experiment. It was fun. So, guess now, off to the snow rescue. The mother-in-law stuck in her driveway.